Do you think that uh, the fiat system could survive the next hundred years? Measured in uh, Bitcoin, fiat is going to zero. How many satoshis, how many bitcoins does someone need? If you have 250,000, then you have as much as on average every person can have. What is the most important problem do you think that Bitcoin solves and, and why is Bitcoin like the best solution for that? All right. So uh, I see that uh, you read the article. <laughs> so uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, for me measuring, uh, economic measuring. And uh, uh, the reason why uh, societies are so uh disorganized and um, and bad is is because of uh, there's no measuring tool that is reliable uh, economic uh, from economic perspective and the first tool that we have is bitcoin basically uh the way i came to to this is um, is through uh through my activities uh because I started to, I invested in, in, in Bitcoin about six years ago. And uh, I said, okay, I'm okay. And uh, I'm set, everything's fine. But how do I help the others? How do, you, how do you help people around me to get Bitcoin, to understand Bitcoin? And, uh, and I tried many things. And then I was... Uh, asking myself, what is the one thing that everybody needs or would need, even people who don't have any savings? Because if uh, if uh, among the Bitcoin people uh, you see some podcasts and talking about uh, people talking about uh, investing and how, where to where you put your savings, but what about the people who don't have any savings? Do they is Bitcoin for them any in any any way good or useful? And uh, and then after this question, I came to the conclusion that economic measuring is the is the thing that everybody needs, even even people who don't have savings, because what we do as humans, we make a lot of decisions we we are make, making decisions every time all all day and uh, to make decisions we need to first uh, be able to compare or measure and uh, if the tool we measure with is bad every next step every following step is going to be distorted. So, um, so yeah, measuring. Mm, interesting. It's also interesting for me when I think of uh, a Bitcoin standard that um, where people don't have, like people who don't have a disposable income, a lot of people say to me like, ah, but what, what are they doing? What, what are people doing? Do, they are not even having the possibility to uh, save in, uh, in, in, in Bitcoin. But then you have to imagine like, what are we on a Bitcoin standard when everything is on a Bitcoin standard and everyone is measuring also everything in Satoshis or micro Satoshis or whatever, um, all prices go down over time. Like the bananas in the supermarket will be a little bit cheaper in a year when we are on a Bitcoin standard because we get better in producing that banana. So if you have an income that is not dis disposable right now, and you keep that same income in Bitcoin, you will have a disposable income at some point because prices fall, uh, which is also an interesting um, aspect of, of having that. Um, do you have like a uh, time frame or like something where like when this happens, we switch to Bitcoin as a unit of account? It's, it's because for me, it's like Bit Bitcoin as a unit of account is the last step in the way then we can really in a Bitcoin uh, world, do you have like a time frame or like a um, this event has to happen, or when this happens, then Bitcoin will be a unit of account? Do you have something like that? Um, uh, great question. 
what I what I try to do and what I'm working on is imagine a world without Bitcoin and trying to work backwards. So uh, uh, my uh, I'm not concerned with fiat. The uh, the step when I'm uh, concerned with fiat, if I have to, uh, if I'm forced to pay something in fiat, then I okay. I pay what I have to pay in fiat because that's it. But otherwise, I am uh, I am living in a world without fiat in my mind, and trying to uh, find implications, and trying to that, that's the vision. That's that's what I I envision. Come back to the present, and trying to find the road or the alternatives uh, how to get there. And then trying to find ways to explain that to other people. So, um, so I leave out uh, um, fiat entirely from my thinking. So to answer your question, for me, uh, fiat stops to exist for you personally when you stop thinking in it. What I used to do in uh, in Twitter is uh, I I used to hashtag uh, Bitcoin mindset all the time. And this is what I'm thinking. You can, your your aim can be to maximize your wealth measured in fiat or measured in Bitcoin. But if we are Bitcoiners, why do we go back? Even hardcore Bitcoiners, even those who, even Michael Saylor, uh, he is, he is um, uh, showing the, the increase of the price of, uh, of uh, microstrategy in fiat. Why? I understand why, because other people think, think like that. And of course, there is, uh, then there's the, the, the reasoning that, okay, I start thinking in Bitcoin when the majority of the people of people start thinking in Bitcoin. But you have to lead, I think, and you have to start and you have to be the leader and show the show the uh, show the road. So, so you are um, right now trying to like if you because for me. I'm also having this goal. Uh, I have a Bitcoin stack, and I'm comparing it year over year. It's got a bit, got it bigger. Like that. That's that's how uh, I think about my net worth. Uh, in, uh, Bitcoin. In, in Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And but when it comes to purchasing, it's just really hard for me to think in Bitcoin because everything is priced in 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 uh, in, in euros. Uh, everything is uh, discussed in euros. Everything is, um, um, yeah, just spoken about euros. So it's really hard for me to like, oh, what? How many satoshis are that? And how many, uh, how many satoshis I I'm, am I giving for that banana? How many satoshis am I giving for that restaurant uh, visit? Uh, um, do, do, do you have yeah. that, or are, are, are you trying to like always calculate what that is in in Bitcoin? No. Uh, the thing I realize it, it is it is enough. I, I try to make things simple. Uh, it is enough to realize that anytime you pay with Bitcoin, you uh, from an economic point of view, you make a bad deal. Which doesn't mean that uh, you shouldn't pay in Bitcoin because uh, if you have to pay something anyways, then at that moment, it's not an issue whether whether you you buy buy that thing in Bitcoin or before that you convert to fiat and and buy for fiat. But strictly from an economic point of view, you are making all the time you're making a bad deal because the value uh, and this 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 might bring me to 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 uh, an important point. There's difference between price and value. And uh, the price is what you pay and value is what you get. But we, we usually equate uh, in everyday thinking, we equate those two. Okay, what's the price? What's the value? And that's the same. It's not the same. 
I, I saw that you've been you've been involved in in some some uh, buying and selling stocks. I, I mean, I yeah. I I read that I, somewhere. Yeah, I was so, uh, in in stocks before Bitcoin. All right, I did the same. So if you invest in stocks, you have to uh, compare two things. If you are a long term, if you are an investor, you have to compare the price, and you have to compare the value. Uh, the price is uh, is available anytime on your screen. If 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 there is a if if it's a publicly uh, traded company, the price is there. Value is a different thing. Uh, to get to the value, you have to make a, a conclusion by yourself based on your thinking, based on your uh, reasoning. And if you calculate the value, only then you compare the value to the price. And if the price is, is uh, smaller than the value, then potentially that's a good investment. Right, so uh, this implies that value and price are not the same. It's 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 so important that distinction because um, a lot of people confuse that uh, price and value. I see it all the time that people are like, oh, but uh, the the most frustrating thing for me is uh, when people look at a unit price and not look at the whole value I, I was always really furious when people compared unit prices of stocks like oh this stock is yeah, two thousand yeah, 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 uh, euros and that is just 20 euros that is so much cheaper no you have to look at the market capitalization and the whole uh thing also with bitcoin you cannot just look at one bitcoin what is one bitcoin worth you have to look at the whole market valuation uh, and what do you think is the total market uh a total addressable market uh, and what is bitcoin right now um uh and this is also something that you you sent me actually that uh you think that the total addressable market is basically just the world just every person uh which i'm also a big believer in um and there you uh wrote in the article uh what was it 200,000 something 260,000 uh, satoshis i think you came to do the calculation uh, yeah, per yeah. person um which is an 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 question that i ask quite a lot um, how many satoshis, how many bitcoins does someone need? What, like, what is the goal that someone shoot for? Uh, if, if they like now just starting out, they are, I don't know, they are 25, they may 35, whatever their age is, and they are having now zero bitcoin and they want to reach enough bitcoin so they can be, um, wealthy or they can be normal, uh, wealth level in a bitcoin, uh, world. What, is 260,000 average or do you, is that the number also that you would shoot for? Or is it higher? Like 260,000 is right now just not even 200 euros, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about 160 or something euros right now. Um, I think for every person it's different. And, uh, and um, uh, I al always uh, tell people when they ask me that the Bitcoin stack should be... Uh, um according to their understanding of bitcoin uh if somebody doesn't understand bitcoin he he looks at it as, as gambling probably or 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 uh get rich quick scheme and then uh, then they they shouldn't put too much into it something and then start start learning uh then after after people understand uh they will uh, from themselves, they will come to the conclusion: the more, the better. Uh, the these two hundred and sixty thousand satoshis, satoshis, which I which I um, uh, adjusted to two hundred and fifty thousand, just because it's uh, it's an easier number to to remember, and and basically it's number of uh, satoshis divided by a number of people on the planet. So it, let's say it's 250,000, more or less, okay? And uh, if, we, if we take this 250,000, um, I lost, I lost what, 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 what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, if you have 250,000, then you have as much as on average every person 
can have. And if Bitcoin is going to be uh, the global uh, reliable measuring tool, then the 250,000 Satoshis must measure everything that the pers a person has. So the 250,000 is everything that an, a person has on the average, of course. So if you have 250,000 Satoshis, you are, as an average person globally, you have, you have wealth as an average person globally. Now, if you understand Bitcoin more and if you want to shoot for more, then, uh, uh, then you buy more. But the mind-blowing thing about this is that what, what, what you also said that you can still have 250,000 Satoshis for 160 euros. <laughs> so that's, that's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's like buying the average. Uh, but do, do you know by heart? I, don't, I have no number in my head. Do you know what the average uh, wealth is right now on, on, on the planet when we look at per person? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I came to the conclusion I, I, I was calculating, but only, only roughly in my, in my mind. Okay. Let's say it's 10,000. Uh, let's undershoot. Okay. Let's say it's 10,000 euros on the average per person. Okay. And I think, I think I, I came to this conclusion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, 10,000 euros. Now 10,000 euros, you can buy 10,000 euros for 200 and i mean to for uh, 160 euros that's it also gives in that question like when we look at bitcoin long term and i know you probably don't do that and i also never did that um trying to figure out where bitcoin price will go because eventually there will not be a fiat price <laughs> as, as, as i see it so it does not really make sense to find out where's the gold price of bitcoin as i did it always with stocks like that's different in stocks i was like oh when it hits that price or that valuation it maybe does not make sense for me to hold it i will uh, diversify and other stuff um with bitcoin it just does not make sense like that because you are part of a bigger revolution part of a a, a, a way bigger thing uh, and bitcoin is the future money like you are investing now in the vehicle that will be uh, the money in the future, which is an amazing thing to think about. Um, but do, do you have any number in your head uh, where Bitcoin should go when we have that uh, every person has Bitcoin? We have Bitcoin as a unit of account. We have Bitcoin as a uh, medium of exchange store of value and everything. Um, obviously, we don't value Bitcoin in that fear terms at that point. But I think why a lot of people value things in fiat r right now is because it helps people to grasp, wh grasp where Bitcoin is going. I think uh, uh, even even making this assumption like, oh, what if everyone has Bitcoin? How many Satoshis can everyone have? This is a great way to even think about that. Uh, but maybe do you have anything in fiat also? Uh, what I have? Sorry. If you have any um, number in in in, in, uh, in mind for fiat, okay. Uh, this brings me back to 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 my to my original point uh, to to the Bitcoin mindset. Uh, let's go back a little bit, okay? Uh, humans uh, uh, tend to measure everything, and uh, if you want to measure, the measuring tool has to be reliable in time and space. So uh, that's why we measure, for example, length in meters uh, or centimeters or whatever, uh, which is the meter is reliable in time and space. It cannot happen that in 100 years, the meter will be different because it's set, it is fixed. And uh, it's, it's like that with anything we measure. And the ec economic uh, measuring tool is the only thing where we fool ourselves. And my, my comparison used to be, uh, let's imagine that we measure length in bananas. You take a banana, measure the length of, uh, of a table, and you come to 10 bananas. 
if you take another banana or tell somebody, call somebody, okay, let's measure that uh, table, the same table. And he, he measures it with a different banana. And now it's 11 or 12. It's not reliable. But we base our decisions on something that's not reliable. Okay? So this implies the following. The only reliable measuring tool for economic um, value is Bitcoin because it's fixed. So the question uh, does make sense to ask the question, what is the value of Bitcoin in something else? Bitcoin is the measuring tool. So I o always used to say, okay, people say, uh, the 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 value again the value of bitcoin is 60000 euros now it's not the value you cannot you cannot measure value with uh, fiat so you can do it the other way around so now i answer your question uh measured in fiat i mean measured in uh, in uh, bitcoin fiat is going to zero that's it it's going to zero and it's going to zero because they are printing so much money and they cannot, they cannot stop printing money because of the, the setup of the whole financial system that is guaranteed. Our best marketing people are the, the people from the Fed and from the, the ECB and, and all the central banks. Do you think that uh, the fiat system could survive the next hundred years? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't care either. I think, I think, uh, uh, we can make the switch. We can, we can make the switch in our minds, stopping to think in uh, fiat. That's just our decision. You can do that. Okay. Uh, similarly, as you don't have to think in terms of length in bananas. Why would you? <laughs> There's the meter. The same is here. So I think. If we want to orange peel as many people as possible, uh, this was my conclusion, this is the door through which it is the easiest to explain Bitcoin. I certainly agree. Like, uh, having that mindset in Bitcoin and thinking in Bitcoin is so important, uh, which uh, is, is completely underrated. Uh, we, we have, like you, you always see it when the buy, uh, price goes up or down, on Twitter, it's like, oh, price 60,000, 65,000. We, we hit that, exactly. that, that. Uh, and it, it makes sense from a marketing perspective. Uh, I'm in contact with a lot of exchanges also, and they see it when the price moves, no matter if it's down, uh, up or down, Bitcoin, uh, uh, Bitcoiners are buying a lot more. If the price is stable and just like goes sideways, People are not buying as much Bitcoin. <laughs> so, so yeah, of course, the, the, yeah, that's, the, that's the, typical typical herd mental mentality. It's uh, that that's how we are wired, you know. Uh, being uh, before uh, having been uh, an, an investor in uh, into um, uh, companies, I trained myself to to withstand these things and to go against the the eighty percent. But then it's it's not that easy because you have to be correct. You have to be uh, you have to be able to say to the other people that you are wrong, and you have to be correct. Then then you can buy uh, value for for a great price. But usually, if prices go down, everybody is get everybody gets frightened and uh, has a tendency to sell. And if the price goes up, everybody has a tendency to buy. Absolutely. But you make a good deal when the price is down and not up. <laughs> if you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing. 
how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in all of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Yeah, there's the saying, uh, never co catch a f uh, falling knife, but I always did that with, with, with my stock investments. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Uh, when it was go going down and it, uh, it seemed like a really good deal. I was really early on in, in, in Tesla and this was like this, this first big investment that I made on and it was half a year, it was just going down. Uh, it was like 50 or 60% even going down. Uh, and I kept investing, kept investing, kept investing. And afterwards, like it shot up, like I think in, in total, it was like thousand or thousand two hundred percent something for me in, 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 in like three years or something like that. Mm -hmm. A really crazy number. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, you always try to think of the fundamental value, the underlying value. What, what does this bring to me? And this is also something in, in Bitcoin. Uh, when, when you have Bitcoin and you value everything in Bitcoin, you value time differently. You value what you do and what you buy differently because you're like, this, this costs me a lot of Satoshis. Like if, if exactly. I do that, do I really want to, uh, do, to do that? Uh, which brings me uh, to my, my next question. Um, when we now imagine everyone is on a Bitcoin standard, like we have this, we got rid of fiat somehow uh, and, and people live on this low time preference, deflationary sound money system uh, called Bitcoin. What, what do you think does this with society? What do you think are the implications um, uh, for our world on that? Or are there even changes? Like is, uh, does this even change uh, something uh, in, in, in the broader sense or will people still be people? <laughs> Uh, I'm positive about this. Uh, of course, this 80-20 uh, distribution is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 seems to be working. Uh, empirically, it seems to be working. So I think 80% of people are followers. And uh, the rest, the 20%, usually fight out the, what's, what's going to happen, you know? And uh, if if we look at look at the the um, the fight around Bitcoin like this, then we have to fight the twenty percent. I mean, uh, we have to be able to to persuade that the eighty percent by uh, by uh, having an upper an upper hand in this twenty percent. Okay, so if Bitcoin wins. And it will win. It win. It wins already. It, it is winning already. Then uh, it has it has some some implications for everybody. You cannot uh, go or do without changing your priorities. So you have to go. People will. Uh, this is my view. I think people will go deeper uh, into themselves and and change uh and evaluate what is really important and what is not important of course everybody has to go his own way i i tell you for example from from myself i i was in a situation back a uh, couple of, uh, a lot of years ago <laughs> 
when I uh, when I was uh, in a good uh, financial position from from one day to the other, basically, and I didn't know how to handle that, and I thought that okay, let's spend proportionately more because I have proportion I have more than I had before. And I was uh, just finding some, uh, let's say, distractions to to buy. You know, uh, let's let's do this, let's do that because I have the money. Well, I don't need it, but okay, let's do that because I have the money. But for life, you you need uh, uh, other things, uh, mostly things that you cannot buy with uh, with money. So uh, you won't be able to respect yourself when you have more money or if your self-respect depends on how much wealth you have, then you will not have enough wealth, never. So that then you have to work in yourself, uh, on yourself and, uh, and solve these issues. Or you cannot buy, for example, you cannot buy... Uh, family you cannot buy friends and you cannot buy health even so i think i think society needs to change and i think uh, uh through bitcoin it will change through that uh low time preference uh mindset and this kind of proof of work mindset uh you think right sorry uh, it, it it will change like i'm always asking like wh why like why does uh, it, it, it change? Because there's like this low time preference. It fixes the incentives of people because all of a sudden people thinking more long term when they're on a Bitcoin standard versus when they are on a, on a fiat standard. When they're on a fiat standard, they are kind of incentivized to spend now. They're spending mm -hmm. earlier because fiat is depreciating in value. So they have to spend the money a little earlier. When they are on a Bitcoin standard, uh, their value of Bitcoin or the value of the purchasing power uh, goes up in time. So they are incentivized to not spend it now and That's to spend it, yes. it later. Is, is, yes. is, 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 are you seeing that as the reason why um, uh, it, it, it fixes like the world a little bit? Yeah, it, it, because it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense to, to overspend because uh, it will have uh, long term, it, uh, your decisions will have uh, negative com consequences in the future. So uh, that's why, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Um, and we always say like time is the most scarce thing and Bitcoin is like second to that. And for me, if Bitcoin is almost almost as valuable as time. It's kind of a measuring tool for time. Uh, if you put in the proof of work, you get Bitcoin out of there uh, and then uh, you can spend that time that you spend in there uh, that you saved in Bitcoin, then you can spend it again for more time because then you can do, do something with that. Um, it's, it's <laughs> maybe it's a weird question, but uh, when 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 time is the most scarce and most valuable asset, and Bitcoin is number number two, is there a number three? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, from a from a spiritual point of view, I think a valuable thing is uh, understanding. Really, really understanding deeply life, uh, yourself, uh, how you fit in the whole and uh and that's that's really valuable from from an from a perspective individual perspective that's that's really important ah, really because cool. because you know everything we do uh we do through our own uh glasses or own lenses so if our own lenses are not clean and then we will see a distorted uh, life uh, or, or we'll see life distorted uh, in a distorted way. So that's, that's why it's, it's really, I, I would say that's number three. <laughs> but maybe uh, not in this order, I don't know. I, I, I love it a lot. Um, when we now think of the transitioning time, uh, we have now Bitcoin as this niche thing. Uh, only a few people have it. Uh, and fiat as this big thing. Uh, and at some point, fiat will be gone or 
really small part of econ our economy and Bitcoin will be the big thing. I There's a really cool um, picture with uh, horses and, bit and cars in New York City. I, it was in the beginning of the 1900s or 18, uh, 1200s. Uh, I don't know exactly when it was. Uh, I'm not good in history, unfortunately, but it was like two pictures and they were like 10 uh, years uh, apart from each other. The first picture showed there were only horses and one, two cars on the road. And the second pictures, 10 years later, there were only cars on the road and one, two horses. Uh, and when you have technology and this S-curve adoption, because the technology uh, moves in, in similar cycles when they're adopting, um, I, I, I can imagine that Bitcoin will be adopted in a really fast manner. When, when we hit a certain point, all of a sudden in like 10, 15 years, adoption gr uh, will grow a lot. Uh, uh, we are not there yet, but we could be really uh, quickly there, I think. Um, how do you see that transitioning phase of, of, of fear and, 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 and Bitcoin? And one part that is also really interesting, we have now a lot of whales in, in Bitcoin. When you think of even normal people, that are kind of normal in, in, in right now because they have like maybe two Bitcoins. They will be really wealthy in, in, in the Bitcoin standard with two Bitcoins. When you think of like uh, two Bitcoins are 200 million Satoshis and we just talked the average wealth on a Bitcoin standard will be like 200,000 Satoshis. There's a big difference in there. Um, how do you imagine that transitioning time? And is it a problem that there's like a lot of whales? How will that distribution go do you have any um uh insights any uh, any plans for for that transitioning to the measuring uh thing of, of bitcoin okay uh first of all adoption adoption for me is a mental process people say adoption is buying bitcoin no adoption is a mental process somebody could uh, somebody could understand bitcoin and have a, a bitcoin mindset and the and take Bitcoin as a, as a measuring tool uh, as opposed to fiat and not own any Bitcoin, which would be foolish because uh, if he'd come to the, these conclusions, he'd, he'd have Bitcoin. But uh, uh, on its own, uh, adoption is a mental process. It's understanding. So now the question is similar to asking whether I'm... Uh, uh, maybe not the the best comparison, but but uh, nevertheless, uh, whether I'm bothered if uh, the measuring stick for length is owned by somebody else, I don't care, because in my mind, the most important thing is a fixed aspect of that thing. That's why it can be a measuring uh, tool. Okay, so so no, no problem. The other question is whether it threatens the uh, decentralized nature of Bitcoin, but that's another question. You know, I'm assuming that uh, mankind and especially uh, Bitcoiners are wise enough to keep uh, that intact. Uh, Jeff Booth used to say, if uh, Bitcoin stays uh, decentralized uh, and something else, I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember now. Uh, but if Bitcoin stays decentralized, then uh, it is the only reliable measuring tool, reliable in time, in space for money. That's it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very true. Uh, for everyone watching, I have a, even a podcast episode with Jeff Boo on my channel. If, if, if people want to watch that. Um, yeah, uh, this is, it's always the, the point I, I, I come back to. If, if Bitcoin is the sound money and decentralized and all the properties that we think it is, and I truly think that it is, uh, obviously, then we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, we don't have to speak for Bitcoin. I chose to speak for Bitcoin because um, I'm really passionate about it and I like speaking about Bitcoin, but I did not choose to speak for Bitcoin to defend Bitcoin or to 
uh, enhance Bitcoin adoption. I will do that because I'm doing it, uh, but it's not my primary goal. Uh, and that's that's an, 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 an really a mind shift uh, towards uh, from the stock market uh, mindset where you try to convince other people like, oh, that stock is really good and stuff like I, I, I don't try to convince other people of, of Bitcoin because if, if it is actually that what we think it is, Bitcoin will convince everybody at some point. People will come yeah. in naturally. I still try to do a good job in educating, try to do a good job in explaining and adopting uh, with other people, but we don't really have to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pure logic, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> if you don't want to go to towards logic, then um, then okay, now that's why they say okay, you 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 buy Bitcoin for the price you deserve. Okay, it's your decision. Absolutely. Um, before we come to the end routine of the podcast, uh, one more one more question. Uh, what are you currently passionate about besides Bitcoin? Is there anything that you are learning? Uh, is there anything that you are doing? Uh, any activity or, or topic that you are uh, diving into uh, besides Bitcoin? Uh, I uh, I do it this constantly. I'm 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 constantly thinking. And I'm thinking about uh, various things. I'm I'm a, a, a lone guy from from this point of view. I'm I'm just uh, uh, in my head and thinking about concepts and mental models and trying to understand deeply uh, questions. So there are some on parallel some 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 problems that I'm trying to to understand or solve. Uh, one of them is the question of understanding the relationship between uh, myself and and the whole and the universe. This is uh, this is one topic. Then I'm really I'm really uh, I, I really like football because I was I was playing football when I was a kid and then uh, uh, it, it remained my passion. So I am. Uh, uh trying to to uh i actually started to to train kids about uh when was that a week ago small kids nine year old kids and and i i do it in a in a method that is uh that is different from from all the methods or most of the methods that they use uh, uh around me and uh, and also but that's also a, an interestingly a phys- philosophical question for me how to how to teach kids or people in a way that the focus is their comprehension and not what and how i would like to convey my message so so this is also also one of the things okay and 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 and, and sometimes sometimes just mental models in in uh, some some particular uh, smaller smaller subject but i'm thinking that. all the time uh so who do you think will win the european championship this year in, in germany <laughs> are, you, are you watching games there <laughs> yes i will watch watch games but i'm um, i don't care i don't i don't care i'm looking at football as a strategic game and I'm trying to understand it as a strategic game and okay. see how it could be improved as a strategic game. It has been, it, it improved a lot um, through, through the, the last X years and it will improve more. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now ca- let's come to the end routine of the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your question is, if you have to make the choice between only lightning transactions or only Bitcoin on-chain transactions for the rest of your life, uh, which one would you choose and why? <laughs> only lightning or it depends. <laughs> it depends. Only one? You can choose only one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the question is uh, a really interesting one. Uh, but yeah, only only one between the Lightning transactions and the Bitcoin transactions for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, I do Lightning transactions. Uh. Because my logic is that I, I'm not uh, ready to and I will not sell my, my core position. And if I 
don't want to sell my core position, then I will not do any any uh, uh, online trans. I mean, uh, base layer transactions. And uh, if I need to pay something in Bitcoin, I will do it on Lightning. And I will when I will earn some Bitcoin, I will earn it and put it on Lightning, and I'll spend it, replace, spend, and 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 replace. Perfect. Uh, then uh, before I let you go, uh, where is the best way uh, for people to reach out to you? Where's the best way for people to ask you questions? Uh, I'm on Twitter uh, at uh, Roland, K-O-V-A-C-S 68. Uh, you can find me there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of shit posting <laughs> and, uh, and that's it basically. Perfect. Then uh, thank you, Roland. And for everyone watching, uh, thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Thank you for the opportunity.